So what I want to talk about here is uh, domains in QGIS. And so a lot of people who are from the ESRI world and have worked with the personal geodatabase, the file geodatabase, or the enterprise enabled geodatabase uh, are familiar with domains. Hopefully they are. Hopefully you take advantage of them as well. And the question would be, right, because it's built into the tools, with QGIS, is it possible? Now, does QGIS have its own sort of format like the geodatabase? And the answer is actually it doesn't. What it does is it, it hooks into existing uh, spatial formats. So, I mean, it can read uh, shape files and geo packages and postgis. It can even read a file geodatabase too in that. And so the question is, well, can you even do it? And the, and the answer, short answer is, yeah, it can be done. Definitely. But, but, or what I ran into was that there are going to be some platform specific issues. So what is that spatial format that you're using under the hood? Right. And we'll talk about that. And then, well, how do you want to do the domains? Have you got some options in that? Um, and how you want to store them. So we get into the spatial format specific issues. We get into domain specific issues. How do you want to handle that? And then, okay, after you made those decisions, then there's a software technique, right? Okay, so once you pick from spatial and domain, uh, there are some software ways, well, okay, if that's what you chose, and this is how you have to do it. So there's lots of different physical formats in that, but we're gonna stick with these three here. Uh, this right here, this uh, shapefile geo package post gist. I could go on and on, right? And so, but these are some pretty common ones. And so how would you do it if you were using this as your base spatial format? And then it would come down to, okay, well, we've got spatial lockdown. How do we do the domain part? Now, I have some CSV files here with my do domain values. I could technically leave them in there. I can leave them as CSV. So that's a very text. Uh, file format specific thing. I could convert them to DBF files. I could load them into tables into a geo package. I could load them into tables in the postgis table. Or I could say I don't want to use tables at all. Like a lot of those are just table techniques, different flavors. Or I could actually attempt to use an enumeration because they exist in Postgres SQL. The problem will be, will QGIS understand what I did? And so when you do the enumeration, it's like adding a custom data type to your system that never existed before in that. And so could the software really be prepared to handle that, right? Hey, there's this new data type in the database and you've never seen it. So how could the software be ready for it would be one question. Um, and depending what, like I said, what you pick for your domain physical format can affect the software technique. A lot of the ones where the coded values, as some people call them, the enumeration values, are stored as a separate table. And that we typically use a technique called QGS relations. I think it's plural. It might be just relation. But I'll, we'll check here shortly. Um, and so we can kind of embed in our project like a one-to-many relationship where the enumeration is the one, the parent table, the one table, and the feature class is the many side. And so that can make things start to work uh, like the domains we see over on the file geo database. However, uh, Postgres enumerations where you define them in the database are supported out of the box. They just work, which is fantastic. Uh, but you couldn't pick this uh, type unless you were actually storing your data in post gist and that sort of thing. So those earlier choices about well, where am I storing my spatial data impact what technique we would use. Now we'll talk about some natural combinations here in that. So I would say, right, because you can mix and match however you want. I think if you're doing shape files, then it would make sense to put the table, like the enumeration values, do it as an extra table in that uh, as a DBF. And then you'd have to use a QGIS relation to uh, join them together. If you're going to go geo package, it would make sense to have that table. It doesn't have to be, but it would make sense that that table be a geo package table. So if you sent the geo package with someone, they would actually, you know, the enumeration values wouldn't go missing. 
You could also go post just post just table because you might be like, well, hey, it's great that QGIS was able to figure out the enumeration, but I'm coming in with another product, Open Jump, or maybe I'm coming with ArcMap or Arc Pro, and then the question would be, would they be able to handle it? And they may not be able to. But you might be like, no, no, we're a, we're a QJS post just shop. So then it would be safe to actually adopt the fourth strategy of your your spatial data is post just and your table, right? So you're, you're, you have your table. One of the columns is a post just geometry column, and one of the other columns is an enumeration value. So it's like there is only one table involved, and you're just adding the type to the database. But that would only be that would make sense, right? If you're a post just QJS shop. There is an issue if you're going to bring in third-party software, and that could be like an internet map server, like a QGIS map server, map server uh, from the University of Minnesota, uh, map guide, uh, ArcGIS REST services. Are those products going to be able to handle the enumeration and that sort of thing? And so then you might have to back off this choice. But if you said, no, no, we're okay. All the products that we use understand what we did and that. And so what we'll do is in this, we're going to do a little demo here and that. Uh, and so these are things that'll help us in the demo. We have four like type or enumeration tables. Those are their uh, particular uh, columns in the CSV files that have the, I guess, is the primary key if we do the table root. And we are going to do a table root. So I'll demo a geo package with a geo package table and a QGIS relation to join them together. And then just a quick test is hey, you know. Let's uh, capture a polygon and see if the drop-down list shows up. That's that's the big crucial test in that. Now, uh, if you want to do post gist, I mean, again, we we'll take a completely different route, right? We're doing SQL and that sort of thing, uh, and it's there's only one table involved, uh, but we do have to add a custom type to the database. But this is, I mean, this is not unusual. But I would just have to say, the only caveat warning would be. Hey, you, you could do something that's fine in QJS and PostGIS, but you might have a third-party product, the Tableau or something like that, that wasn't quite ready for what you did. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start demoing uh, the actual creation of the Geo package in that in QJS. So I have QJS here. Bring it to the foreground. This is this project folder is the same folder where I was had those notes. Uh, in VS Code. Now we're not going to be doing any coding today in that, but it was just so we could uh, render it. So I'm going to go right click on here and go new, and I'm going to go a new geo package. Now it's this, I'm not sure how I feel about this. You're going to make a package and at least one layer in it. So I'll call this BCIT underscore LIS. Okay, and the first layer I'm going to put in here is rooms. Okay, the geometry type for rooms is going to be polygon. I don't need Zs or Ms today. I would say look up a projection. Mine's already in the list, but I'll show you how to do it. 26910. Select it so that you see this change. That's the bounds of the projection. I'm going to go OK. And I am going to have one field. Uh, room. No, I'm going to need two fields, actually. Room underscore name. Text data is fine. We'll make it 50 characters and we'll add it. It's going to tack on a feature ID, a primary key for me, so I don't need to add that right now. And I'm going to go room uh, type ID. Okay, that's going to be a whole number. That's going to be the one that links to the enumeration as a table kind of concept. And I'll add that. And I will go OK. I will add, uh, open this up. Add the layer here, and I'll just go OK. What I'm doing there is setting my projection to 26910. I'm going to slide down and actually bring in some open layer, open street map tiles. Uh, they'll get projected into UTM zone 10. Hey, it remembered where I was. Fantastic. So this would be uh, the concept of, I guess, I would need better data, but we'll just, this is just for a demo. <laughs> In that. So this is SW3. I'll go down here. I'll, I know we can make a little room in here eventually. I'm going to need to slide this to the bottom. Done. I'm going to go save. We save as you go along. And now the question is going to be what do I do with those CSV files? Yeah. So first I'm going to bring them all in. One, two, three, four. So now there are tables in here. 
Remember, there's CSV files out here. Now they're like tables loaded into the software. I'm going to go down here and make sure I actually have a connection, add a connection to here. I'm going to use a tool built into the database manager that will let me import those tables. So what I want to do is quickly slide across uh, those tables into the database or import them conceptually. There's my table in that. So I'm going to click on rooms. I'm just going to go import layer in that. So I'm going to bring a room types in in that. Uh, I'm just going to bring this, this is where I'm going to use this important information here. You know, what was the ID in that table? You could always just open up the CSV file. Never hurts to do that. I'm going to put this off screen, but uh, that's where I'm getting the names. It's from that demo details. So the big thing there is uh, room type, room time is fine. Primary key actually is not ID. I wanted to use that one that's in the file. It doesn't really have geometry in that. I'll go OK. And I'm going to bring in the rest as well uh, in that. So import, I'll just drop down hose cabinets, right? I'll go get the uh, what was it? hose cabinet types ID, right? That's going to be the primary key. So this is just bringing these in, just, you know, get all my data in one place in that. Might as well uh, bore you with getting the rest, I guess. Fire fixture types. Again, uh, fire fixture types ID. It's grabbing the ID from that page. Uh, primary key will be set here in that. Okay, gone. Uh, so they're all getting loaded into uh, the geo package. And departments, departments, great. And this has a very long key. Now, this what I ran into uh, was I tried to do this with shape files. There is a limit on the column name length. Right, so I couldn't have this big long name as the primary key. It gave me lots of grief. Okay, now I've got these four tables here. I'm going to remove them and make sure I bring over these four because I want all my data in one place. So I will close this for a second, uh, highlight these because these are actually the CSV versions. So I'm going to remove them. I'm going to go back here. Can I add them all at once? Add selected layers. Ooh, that's nice. Like that feature. Now they're all in there. Okay. Now, so I have all my data in one spot in the geo package. Uh, I want to go up and make a relation between room types and rooms. And room types is the parent, and room types is the child. So up on project properties, uh, relations. I'm going to add a relation. Right, and then who is it going to be? Uh, and that I'll let it handle. Do I have to give it a name? Add a relation name. We'll just see. I want to make sure these are set properly first. It's going to be room types as the parent, and it's going to be room type ID to rooms room type ID. We're going to do that there, and that. And so we give this. We'll give this a name. I guess we'll call it. Room types, rooms. And association means uh, we don't do delete cascades right now. So we'll go OK to that. And we'll go apply. OK, that's the goal. Now I'm going to digitize in a room real quick. We'll make rooms active. Uh, turn on the pencil icon for editing. So we can start editing a polygon. I'll pretend to be putting in a room, right? Uh, and that so I have a room here. I'll right click to finish. How to give the room a name. This is going to be a bad room. Uh SW032 2635. That is not where 2635 actually is. But notice what we're trying to demo here in this list is look the the drop down list of of uh values showed up. And we will call this a lab. Okay, and then we can go OK. So I'm going to call that a success. Um, but there are some, as we say, implementation details, and that's specific to the platform specific model you choose, whether you're doing shape files, geo packages, or postgis. And then making, uh, I guess, a natural combination that 
you know, if you're going to use a geo package, put everything there. If you're going to use shape files, you're probably DB do using DBF. And if you're going to be using PostGIS, you get a couple of choices, but definitely the tables should be in, you know, Postgres SQL and whether you want to bump up to an enumeration or not. That's really up to you. But that's all for now.